Aoniche, big news, Bombra has finally been added to Google Translate. Yes, okay, this is huge. For the first time, people can instantly go between Bombra and languages like English, French, or any of the other 100 plus languages that are available on Google's machine translation service. How did they do it? Is it any good? What is it useful for? And what are its limitations? That's all coming up. My name is Coleman. I'm the teacher and linguist behind Ankata, my initiative to create media and resources for speaking and learning Mandang. Are you new here? Think about subscribing. Otherwise, Ankata. According to Google, the Bambra language translation model was trained primarily via monolingual Bambra text. Google calls this approach zero shot machine translation. This is a technical innovation because it means that the software was never fed a single example of how to translate between Bambara and English, or any other language for that matter. What? But how? I asked around and I got this basic explanation. Most machine translation engines or models are trained with parallel data, basically meaning a set of aligned one-to-one -one sentences in both of two languages, let's say Bambara and English for instance. In this case, the model is developed by feeding it the aligned parallel translations in Bambara and English. It goes through them and eventually extracts a number of implicit rules for translating between the two languages. To build a machine translation model from a monolingual data set, or corpus, you need another approach. This is done by feeding the model monolingual sentences and versions of the sentences that have blanks in them. For instance, mbeta and mbe. This is like giving the computer fill in the blank exercises, also known as closed tests, along with the answers. If you do this across multiple languages at the same time, that is you create a parallel fill in the blank or closed corpus, it turns out the model will identify shared traits of grammar and word meanings across the different languages. Amazingly, this means that the model is capable of providing halfway decent translation, even if it's never been fed examples of actual translation between Bambara and English. All right, that's enough about how it was developed. Let's delve into its features. Currently, as of May 2022, Google Translation for Bambara works in text form only. This means that there is no way to hear how something is pronounced in Bambara. It doesn't have a speech synthesis or text-to-speech feature that can read written Bambara out loud. It also doesn't have a speech recognition or speech-to-text capability. That is, you can't speak to Google Translate in Bambara and have it write out what you are saying as a first step towards translating. But you can type in English or French or any other language that Google Translate supports, and it will try to give you a translation in Bambara. Google Translate includes a dictionary feature for English, but not for Bambara. If you type in a single word in English, it'll both look up your word and attempt to translate it into Bambara. For instance, if you search for the word coward, you can see it like a normal entry in a traditional print dictionary of English. It's got a part of speech, a sense, synonyms, usage notes, and examples. If you type a full sentence like, the great man spoke to me, you can even click on any word to pull up its individual dictionary definition. On the other hand, neither Bambra words that you input nor that the machine spits out for you are linked to a Bambra dictionary. For instance, if you type in srambagato, it doesn't look it up in the dictionary at the same time. There's no further information about the term at all. All you can see is the engine's attempt to translate what you've typed. However, if you input an English sentence for translation, the Bambara output is clickable. Doing so brings up alternative translations that come from somewhere within the machine. You can rate translations, but only if you are using the desktop version of Google Translate. You click on the thumbs up, thumbs down icon, and then you can either select thumbs up, at which point you are done, or you can select thumbs down, which brings up an extended prompt asking, what is wrong? You can respond with, unintended meaning, awkward or incoherent, too formal or casual, wrong gender, which doesn't apply to Bambara, inappropriate or offensive, or other. Otherwise, on both desktop and mobile, you can opt to send feedback, which requires you to write out a proper message, though it can also send a screenshot and or your system logs. This seems to overlap with rating translations, but I imagine this is meant for reporting software bugs and not for rating the actual quality of the translations. In either case, it's not clear to me where this goes or how this data is or isn't followed up on by Google. Maybe something to improve. 
One final feature worth mentioning is the contribute feature, which lets you work through various tasks that can help improve Google Translate as a service overall. This includes validating translations for accuracy and translating words and entire phrases. Contributions as a feature could use some tweaks. For instance, in both validate and translate, they say to please ignore errors in the original text, but at the same time, you can flag an original text example for review. Not sure what that means. I did stumble across something really cool though. When I worked through some translate tasks, I was given the option to translate sentences that were written in UNCO script. Unfortunately, as we'll see in a bit, the engine doesn't seem to support UNCO based texts otherwise, but perhaps it's in the works. All right, that's more than enough about the features. Let's put this thing to the test and see what we get. Let's start out with some simple sentences. Hello? Aunibara. I guess that works. It is technically a way to greet someone. Hi. Aunibara. So again, we get Aunibara. Hi to you. Bonjour à vous. We get French. What is up? Mude bekake. I've never heard it as a greeting. Good morning. Ani sogoma. Here, it opts to use the old orthographic form of having a apostrophe. Good afternoon. Iniula. This actually works perfectly. Let's try, how are you? Ika kenewa. Are you healthy? And I'm curious, what happens if you actually type, are you healthy? Yala ikeneyarawa. It means something maybe a little bit more like, have you become healthy? How about, my name is Coleman? Netogoyeko Coleman. And it is possible, but in my experience, not what's typical. My last name is Donaldson. Ntoko labanye Donaldsonye. We here would want to see it with Jamu. How about if you want to ask somebody, what's your name? Itoko bedi works perfectly to ask one person. What happens if we try to change it to say, what's your last name? Itoko labanye muye. I mean, this is more literally last name, but that's not how you say it in Bambara. Let's see if we try to switch it around to family name. Ika dembaya togo ye muye, which means the name of your family, but it's not how you actually say someone's last name. What if we try surname? Itogo ye muye. So this isn't working at all. In this case, we have not gotten jamu a single time. Where are you from? Ibe bo dugu jumena. This literally means you come out of which town? I'm from America. Ne bora emeriki means literally I came out of America. It's nice to meet you. Akadi kai kumbe. It means literally it is sweet to meet you, but kumbe frequently can have a little bit of the meaning of like to run into someone as in to encounter them. Have a nice day. Katlehere. That seems to work. This would actually be a shorter form of ala katlehere. Let's try goodbye. Kambe. We should have a little apostrophe. All right, let's try some things that are a little bit more difficult. I speak English. Nebe tubabukanfo. Tubabukan, which literally means language of the white person or language of the Western person, actually would mean French. How about I speak French? Nebe francicanfo. Instead of using tubabukan, which is the colloquial way to refer to French, it actually says the more specific form francicanfo. How about I understand Bambara? People tend to use the verb kamen, meaning literally to hear, to express the idea of understanding a language in the way that we say it in English. How about, do you speak English? Yala ebe tubabukan fo wa. But again, it's referring to English with tubabukan. Let's say something like, I understand jula. Nye jula famu. All right, so in this case, it doesn't actually understand that jula is the proper name for a language. What happens if we try writing Jula in a different way? If we put, for instance, we still get, oh, actually, we get it in the past now. Nye Jula Famu. So I have understood Jula. Aiwa. Let's try some student favorites. These are the kinds of things that often come up in class or in lessons with me. I'm late. Mbe late. No, that doesn't work. That's just an English word. How about I'm busy? Mbolo degunendo. This is saying something like my arm is encumbered. How about it's nice out in the sense of let's go outside. Akadika bo. It's nice to go out. What else if we change things? Akadikenema. Literally, it's pleasing outside. Unfortunately, I can't. Afo mandi nga ntese. Saying it is not pleasing, but I can't. I'm happy. Nison dialendo. I sweetened hearted it is. 
I'm full. As in, I just ate a lot of food and I'm full. Mfalendu. I'm used to people actually saying mfara. All right, now let's try looking up some sentences in English that would normally translate into Bambara forms that have markedly different spellings from what you actually hear people pronounce orally. Someone stole it. Mogodoya sonya. Ka sonya has become ka shuen, but we see that here they use the standard Bambara spelling. I don't eat beans. Nete chefan du. Chefan would actually make me think of chicken egg. I think it might be completely confused. Beans are tasty. Shokadi. So soso became sho, became sho. But here they actually write it in this kind of new standard. I cooked chicken. Ne sogotobi. This one actually means I cooked meat. The chicken crossed the road. Konoye sratege. The bird crossed the road. The chicken is delicious. Konoinkadi. This bird is good. Let's just try chicken on its own. Sise. Malians would typically say she. They have opted to preserve the fuller form. All right, let's try some more advanced sentences and we'll see where we get. It's so hot in this so trauma that I think I'm going to die. Akasuma kosobe ni so trauma ni kono fong hagli la kombetasa. It's so very cold inside of this so trauma to the point that in my mind I will go and die. Seriously, I can't take another bite without getting sick. Seriously, nte seka kini wereta. It just didn't even try to translate seriously. It just gave it to us in English. And then let's imagine that you're at the market. Can you please lower the price? Because I really don't think that bananas are that expensive. Yala aubeseka songo jigi bao chiana ne haklako bananku songo ka gelentewa. So technically, can you reduce the price? But I would have, in Bambara, said, Yala aubeseka do boala. Because in truth, in my thought, ko bananku. So bananku would actually be the a type of yam. It's saying, because do you think that I think that bananku are that expensive? Okay, let's try to really throw it for a loop by entering some English proverbs. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Auba fe uka ke au ye chogomena auko ke mogowereye. You want people to be towards you in which manner, auko ke, you should do that to other people. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Pome kelent le kono obe doctoro mabo. One apple in the day makes the doctor move away. Don't count your chickens until they hatch. Aukana auka kono jatifo uka bo. You mustn't count your birds until they come out. Okay, and now let's really go crazy by saying some idioms. This was so fun. I had a blast. Nie blast do soro. I obtained some blast. Okay, now it's time to test things the other way around. So let's go from Bambara into English and see what we get. Iniche. You are welcome. Heresra. The way to peace. Heretlena. Just peace? That's all we have? We just have peace? Somoro dung. What about the relatives? No, but seriously, this one does work. Ikakene? Are you healthy? Yes, we got this one. Toroten. I don't have a problem. Do you have a problem? Heredron. Just peaceful? Ambe alatanu. We praise God. This doesn't give you the cultural sense behind the sentence, but it does give you the literal meaning. Alakat le herechaya. God bless you for a long day. A really long day. Okay, and now it's time for some more complicated sentences. I speak Bambara. You don't hear English. You just don't hear it. Ankata. Let's go. Mbife. I love you. Nalasona. If God wills. All right, so I think this one works. It would have been a little bit more natural if it was God willing. All right, and let's now do some ones that I'm 100% sure it's going to have trouble with. I want to go to the shop and buy chicken. Why does it think that sogo is chicken? God help us. Yes, God help us. Sontila. There's no acceptance. All right, this one is totally wrong. Sontila would actually mean you don't have a fault. 
I'm so excited. Mdusukadi for me, my heart is pleasing, could also just capture the idea of I'm happy. Mfara, I started. All right, so this one is totally wrong. Mbifu. Actually, mbifu does mean I greet you. It's not in the future, but it can also mean something like I thank you. Sabali. 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 No? No, it's not English. Takabui. A little bit awkward in English because we would just say, get out of here. Kabako. Incredible. Though it does literally mean a shocking affair. Patisakana. Participate. I don't think that's what Alpha Blondi means. I actually think patisakana is more like an exclamation of surprise. Something like, oh heavens. Jati. Sure. This would actually more like precisely. But I like the idea of just saying sure. So a student does something, gives an answer, and you're just like, sure. Wallahi. Wow, that's it. Wallahi actually comes from Arabic. It's an exclamation that can be used to say something like, by God. Some people actually consider it a kind of swear word. Sorry. Hate. Hate. That just doesn't work. Dofaraka. Add more of it. All right, so this one actually is an expression, ka do And if you say to someone at the market, do farakan, that would mean something like, add more money on top of your offering price. Barka, thanks. It can also mean thanks to say something like, please lower the price. But some people would say, abarka. So let's see. Blessings. So it's just missing that meaning. Boy, get out of here. Kanjuma debe. What language is there? All right, so this is an expression to say, what's up? Ibakan. You're on it? I'm on it. But again, this is another sentence that would typically use to be saying something like, you doing good? Kobedi. What are the circumstances? Kobedi is saying, how are affairs, as in, how are things going? Ambe barka dai. We are thankful to you. I, can you say that in English? We are thankful to you. We thank you, maybe? Doni doni do. Slowly but surely, doni doni do literally means it's bit by bit. Namu. Namu? Namu. That's not English. Chiando. It's true. Nyame. I've heard it. I've heard what you said and I like it. Nifle. Look at this. Look at that. Herebe. Is there peace? No, there's not peace. We are a broken, destructive species. Toroste. There's no trouble. I would have used suffering instead of trouble, but. Bana ben. I have a disease. So I would have said, I'm sick. A sickness is upon me. Kundimi ben. I have a cough, but actually I have a headache. There's value in it, in the stock market. And if we do things right, so actually this is a halfway decent translation. All right, now let's see how it does with some words that are distinguished by tones. Ba be bala. There is a river in the river. No, there's a goat at the river. Ba, goat, yes. Ba, goat. No, mother. Actually, though, if we click on it, we can see the different forms. Ba, goat. Ba, mom. Ba, river. Akoko ikana. He said that you should come. Ako ikana. He said you should come. Musoka mobilika bon. My wife's car is great. My wife's car is large. Kanawa. Where are you? No. Shall I come? Dorome flabe mbolodron. I only have two dollars. Dorome doesn't necessarily mean dollars. It would actually mean, most likely, West African sefa. And in that case, you actually needed to multiply two by five. Musokun. 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 This woman? No, the woman's head. Sofin bulla. Sofin ran away. I thought it was gonna be the black horse ran away, but the white horse ran. No, it just totally mixed up white and black. Inanasuro. Did you come at night? Did you come last night? Let's try spelling it a different way. Did you come in the morning? Um, Baramabo Barala. The job didn't go out of business. All jobs are equal. No job is different from another. Nene mai. The cold isn't good. Not very poetic. Sinikeneaka bele kobeye. Age and health are hard for everyone. Age and health are more difficult than all matters. All right, let's see how Google Translate does with some variation 
and we're going to start off by looking at how it approaches Jula forms. See you another day. It's so hard. They're snowboarding tomorrow. No, they're coming back tomorrow. They'll be back tomorrow. Now you got it. The baby's mother is far away. No, the kid's mom is tall. The baby is far away. All right, so it doesn't get Bombay either. Basitara. 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 There's nothing wrong with that. So it doesn't get the difference between la and ra. I dance. I danced. This actually means welcome. Though it doesn't seem to be able to get it in Bambara either. I don't eat arguments. I don't eat beans. I don't eat gluten. Sure. Maybe does it actually mean gluten historically instead of just beans? Si se be bona. There is a snowflake in the house. No, there is a chicken in the house. Sheep are in the house. No, there's a chicken in the house. All right, let's test it for non-standard Bambara spelling. Musokai kosobe. The woman is very nice. Okay. The woman is so beautiful. Cheka jugu. Tied to the jugu. All right, let's try writing it in normal spelling. The man is terrible. Let's see how it does with tone. Chenana. All right, so if we add full tone, it seems to just interpret it. All right, so it got all of them. Let's try something a little bit more tricky using the distinction between definite and indefinite. There is no woman here. Wrong. Musoteyang actually means the woman in question is not here. So I think that underlyingly Google just erases all of the tone marks and just tries to guess purely without them. All right, and now let's see how it does with the unko script. So it just doesn't even handle unko. If you put it in there, it can't interact with it. Woo, that was a lot. Where does it leave us? Here are my takeaways. Despite my nitpicking in this video, it's an incredible tool that is more than serviceable. The fact that it might facilitate people's ability to communicate instantly in even a rudimentary way is without a doubt amazing. Sure, as of right now, the engine sometimes makes flagrant mistakes, such as confusing hot for cold or repeatedly translating chicken or sise as bird or meat. I'm confident though that such things will be worked out in the months and years to come as Google collects more and more data, works with more and more people, and incorporates a proper dictionary like the one that I made. That said, no matter how good Google Translate for Bambara is today or how good it is tomorrow, machine translation from Bambara does not mean that there's no point to learning the language anymore. Just like for other languages such as French, Chinese, German, Arabic, or English, it's just a tool and one that has limitations. First, it doesn't take tone into account, but you can freely paste text with tonal markings and it will simply ignore them without being thrown off. Second, for now, you can only translate to or from Bambara in Latin script. But based on the fact there is some unco text present in the contribute section, it looks like there may be some support for it down the road. Third, Google Translate's Bambara engine can handle some orthographic and dialectal variation, but it's not exactly clear which kinds and why or why not. Finally, unless you are just inputting a single word and using Google Translate like a very simple dictionary, the shorter your input is, the less likely it is that Google Translate will provide you with a contextually appropriate rendering. This isn't really surprising. Perfect machine translation is impossible, even for the languages with huge data sets, comprehensive dictionaries, and highly standardized written traditions like English or French. This is because meaning depends on context, and defining the appropriate context for interpreting something can only be negotiated by actual people as a social act. Moreover, Google Translate isn't currently very good with culturally situated usages. Yes, you can say mbe bamanakam famu, I understand Bambra, but the normal sounding way to say this in Bambra would be mbe bamanakam meng, I hear Bambra. We have entered a new era. Suddenly anyone can input the text of a Bambra language article and get an instant approximation of its meaning. While it won't be perfect, it means that anyone can get the gist without needing to appeal to a translator or spending the time actually learning the language. Alaka nafabo Google ka barala. Aywa, what do you think of Google Translate's Bomber language capabilities? Let me know down in the comments below. Auka folido, aukamben, auniche.